I really find it incredible to be doing this in the hut of the village leader of, of a mercy. It's unbelievable. Well, here I have seen myself in a mercy village, blood on my hands, cow shit all over my body. And well, people, welcome to a new video. Finally, in the Omo Valley in the south of Ethiopia, the whole area of the tribes. I imagined it almost completely deserted, but it seems that the Omo Valley is pure jungle, at least for these moments. We just had a flat tire and I thought it was a good time to start the video. But well, we've already changed it, so we'll be right out. As I say, we are going to live with tribes, in this case with four tribes. You will see which are the four and why we are only going to live with four. Because let's see, there are more. You have to understand certain concepts before meeting these tribes. There are things that seem to contradict each other at first but make sense. For example, the development, the evolution in their cultures is undeniable, but at the same time their traditions remain super authentic. That is to say, on the one hand, we see that tribes have even stopped growing plants because they live off the money from tourists and the photographs they take, because they have to pay for the photographs, but on the other hand, we see that most of them simply go naked. They keep their culture super close to the skin, super authentic, as I say. They have traditions that are too beastly, they even kill each other performing certain rites. I'm talking about today, all this is still going on. So, in some aspects, they are super authentic, in other aspects, not so much. But well, I'll continue explaining on the way, in the car. Okay, we're up and running, we've got Deku over here. What's up? He is the person who is going to give us a hand because we must not forget that they are still completely savage tribes in many aspects, right? I am going to explain first of all the way in which people who come to Omo Valley usually visit these tribes, even most photographers or filmmakers. Basically come to these tribes in a 4x4 like us, but spend only an hour, two, maybe three with this tribe, pay money for each picture they take and leave. So the portraits or photos that they take of course are impressive because they maintain some customs that are crazy for any westerner let's say. But they really haven't lived at all, at all with these tribes and they stay in a photo that could be a photo in a costume or prepared by the tribes to get more money, right? So the mission with which I come, what I have proposed to myself is to come where everyone else comes but to do what no one else does. I really want to live with these tribes. I want this thing that they wear on their bodies not to be a disguise but to understand this culture and live with it. Precisely for this reason, although there are more tribes, I will only live with four because I prefer to live with fewer, but spend more time with each one. Learn and enjoy more of each one. And right now we are driving. Well, we have about two hours drive, but we are driving towards a Mercy tribe, and really it is the most feared tribe. This tribe has little relationship with the others, precisely because of this, because they are very powerful, territorial. Really, the other tribes are afraid of them. And having conflicts or going to war with the Mercy is something that no other tribe wants. Far from it. So nothing, let's enjoy the trip and then I will tell you more. We have to get to some mountains where this Mercy village is. Don't be fooled by these real wild dogs because I myself would rather be attacked by a lion than by a group of wild dogs for real. The lion simply kills you and then eats you but the wild dogs when they catch you start eating you alive and what I say they don't even care about killing you, they eat you while you are still alive so I won't get too close. We have been in Mercy territory for some time but we are already very close, very close to the village. In all this territory there are about 150 Mercy inhabitants but they are divided into families, right? Really like the Amazonian communities, I think it is typical behavior in tribes that are divided by families, right? I was surprised at how well we were treated upon arrival. Or well, much better than I had been told that it was going to be a mercy. And they explained to me, I said before one, two hours, three, no, no, no. Most of the tourists said that they come and stay 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then they come back. Most tourists have said that they come and stay 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and leave with their photos. But what we are going to do is very special, I will explain later, but we are going to live directly with them, something that very few people do. Of course, they have let us film them a little bit and no more. Now, every time I take out the camera, they tell me no video, no photo, and I have to explain to them that I am recording me. It is something they do not understand. There are many behind me, as you can see, and really, they can be a bit violent. It's in their blood. So even though they are recording me, better to wait until I get to the village so that they understand a little bit why we are here and what we are going to do. But well, little by little. Well, and we finally have here what is a Mercy village. These are the typical Mercy houses that look like a bird's nest. So they described it to me and it is completely true. Look at those little doors. The huts are like that because for the rainy season it's better that they are small to cover them easily. Even there cannot enter large animals. I 
also tell you everything, you know, for better or for worse. I am paying money for being here, which is very good to be able to contribute since I will be living in their homes or at least in their territory. And besides another total price for these photographs and videos that I am doing, this is undeniable that it is the real reality in the Omo Valley. But there is a very big difference, and that is that people that come here normally pay photo by photo. So they are only interested in having more photos taken. That is to say one photo, five veer, one photo, five veer, one photo, five veer. And I have told them, please, I can pay them, okay? But I prefer to give a total price and then feel free to record whatever I want, to take the camera out without worrying, so that they can enjoy me as a person, so they don't see me as a dollar sign, right? And that's what I have done. I have paid a total of six, seven euros, and I have been able to live here. To record all this without having to pay photo by photo. about to fall so they are already making dinner. Normally the Mercy's diet is porridge, logically they can also eat meat and other things. But let's say the essential in their diet is ground cereals. And also Sashu, as you are seeing, the women are the ones who are always cooking. The women are also the ones who build these houses and the men are more in charge of livestock herding and caring for them. It is also important to say that at least these Mursi communities, because I know that not all of them, but these at least are nomadic, but being nomadic, they do not change by seasons of location. That is to say, it is not by seasons of rain and drought as in other places. Here they change the territories in which they live every three years or so, and it is because of the cattle, so that the cattle can start grazing in other lands, in other territories. And well, at this moment you can see that we already have the tents set up and ready to go in because we sleep in the Mursi village but not inside their houses. The houses are for them, logically, and we come with our own tents. It is also incredible the fact that they love tattoos, for real. They love tattoos and of course I am full of tattoos on my legs, arms, back, chest. I have tattoos on all my body. Love it. They're looking at the leg tattoo now and look, look at this, they're all freaking out. What we are doing is really very special because normally it is forbidden. Not that the Mursi prohibit going to sleep with them or near them, but it's something that people outside say, they tell you not to do it, no way. What they say is that they get drunk at night and if they already have that character, let's say violent, aggressive during the day, then at night it can be super dangerous and you know that on top of that they have firearms, but you know that I don't like to keep these stories about people. I am not saying that they are lies. What I am saying is that I know that they also had to have a good part and we are here, spending the night with them and living with them, which is what we wanted. What is true about all this is that they drink pretty much. We have had to bring them gin and ron, but we are drinking gin with them, so no problem. And nothing spending the night in a Mercy tribe, you don't see this every day. Okay, another great moment just came up because we're at the campfire and all of a sudden none other than the leader of this village, Holokoro, is the name. Holokoro is the leader of this tribe, has come to invite me to the hut where he lives to eat typical Mercy food. So fuck it, let's do it. Okay, so this is how you should enter into a mercy house. It is very good and to explain it to you in some way, it is like freshly baked breadcrumbs, I would say, because it is like wet. And the sauce is spread on the meat, which is spicy, and the truth is that it is very good. It really seems incredible to me to be doing this in the hut of the leader of the village of a mercy. It is incredible.
And this what we are eating is also the typical food, as I said, the porridge. What is boiled cereals and meat in sauce. Today they hunt with Kalashnikovs, with firearms. In the past, not so long ago, I imagine, they hunted with spears. What is happening right now is that here, that is, in the Morsi culture, husbands and wives never eat together. First the husband eats first, even if cooks the wife, first the husband eats and then the wife. Then I was invited by the leader. I still can't believe I'm here. He invited me to have lunch with the men. He's calling the woman. As you could see yesterday, one of the most characteristic things of the Mercy tribe is the decorative plate that women put on their lips. That is to say, since they are very young, the women begin to make an, an extension, let's say, on the lower lip until they can put bigger and bigger plates. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, okay? This actually stems from something very negative, because in the time of the colonizers, they took women from the villages, women from the tribes, and in order to make them ugly, they decided to start cutting their lips. But again, something that started out bad has turned into something good, let's say, because today it's a sign of beauty. The bigger the plate this woman can get, the more beautiful she is, the more she is valued in this tribe. Oh well, and they also take out the two lower palates and then they go around with one lip hanging out. No teeth down here and sticking their tongue out there. And I say hanging lip because as you saw yesterday, normally they don't go with the plate, they put the plate for the tourists. I mean, it's in their culture, but the plate is for special situations. I also want to tell you about one of the most famous, strong and violent traditions of the Mursi tribe. It is the Donga combat, the Donga fight, in which men always fight between them with these woods, with these sticks. Every Mursi man has one of these own. And in fact, walking around on a day-to-day -day basis, walking around on a day-to-day -day basis, you can see them also with these. And in the Donga fight, they must fight each other with these sticks until one of the two falls. And whoever wins gets to choose woman. The Donga fight they do from time to time. This time I don't think we're going to be able to see it, but hopefully in the future I'll be able to come back to record that. It can be really aggressive, really beastly. They can lose eyes, body parts, or they can die directly in these fights. Because this is the time to show who they are, how much they are worth, then they are really beastly. And as I say, the Mursi are one of the most corpulent, physically strong tribes combined with their character. So that's gotta be amazing, and someday we'll see that, I'm sure. I can also talk to you about scarifications, which are these cuts that are made on the body to leave scars. Basically, they are drawings made of scars. The story is, as it could not be otherwise with the Mursi, bestial. And if they killed a person, they had to make a scarification on their body like a death counter. Or if they wanted to scarify themselves, they had to kill a person from another tribe to be able to do it. So a person with many scarifications on his arm, chest or shoulders meant that he had killed a lot of people. Well, they're smearing me in cow shit because... As I was saying, I am being... smeared in cow shit because I took off my shirt for a second. But because it is so hot here and suddenly they said, wait, come on, come on here. They say it's good to protect you from the sun and so on, but... anything to feel like a part of their culture. But I am going to explain to you what we are here for, why we have come here, which is where the cattle are. Actually, the Mercy kill for their land, kill for their territory, they kill for their cattle, but they rarely kill their cattle. That is, normally cows are not for eating. From time to time they do eat them, but it is not the normal situation. Cows are very necessary for milk, logically. But there is also another reason, which is at weddings, to be able to pay the woman and her family. 
But there is a reason that is very important, that we are going to discover now, that we are going to live now. And that is that they drink in their blood. Without killing the cow, he makes a ceremony of drinking its blood in the mornings. And that is why we have come, because I am going to participate in it. And notice that I eat everything, everything, everything. This is one of the things that will disgust me the most, that will shock me the most. But well, I'm going to do it. Now look, if there were flies before, imagine now. <laughs> Okay, so the moment we are going to see that we are going to live in my case is really quite strong. Don't worry, they are not going to kill the cow. As I say, they rarely ever kill their cattle. But they have brought the bow and one person is going to shoot the cow with the bow while others hold it. As I say, this is not done for me. This is a mercy ceremony and this is something the mercy do. I'm just going to participate and I'm finding it hard to do because once they shoot it, I have to catch the blood with my hands and drink from that blood. But okay, here we go. As you can see. Oh shit. It's really not bad, it has a taste. I expected it to be much stronger. It's quite tasteless and it's warm, that's for sure. That is, look at this. What I don't like at all is the taste that stays in the mouth after drinking the blood. It's a super weird taste for sure. Well, here I am, in a mercy village, blood on my hands, cow shit all over my body. I did not expect this when I arrived. It has really been a much cleaner, more relaxed, calmer ceremony than I expected. I was expecting a suffering animal and it was really good for me to see that this is not the case. They simply shoot the calm cow, she doesn't even feel pain because she doesn't even react. The person who has the bow knows where to shoot, it has a part of the neck that is where he shoots, then they take out the blood and the cow returns with the others. And well, after thanking the mercy, because it has been incredible, we are in a river, that is to say, we have already returned, we have done about half of the way. And we stopped at this river, which is the Mago River, to clean up some of the cow shit I have all over my body. If in the Amazon I said that I was afraid to get into a river in Africa, well, more of the same, really. In Ethiopia, there are crocodiles, hippopotamus, and we will probably see them in the next few days, but... In theory, not here. And well, I'm going to undress, I'm going to take my clothes off, and I'm going to jump into the river because otherwise there is no way. So we have concluded, it was really incredible. We have seen an image of the Mercy tribe and their lives. Really surprising even for me. An image that I did not expect. The Mercy, the most feared tribe of the Omo Valley. This is true, but we have seen their friendlier, more welcoming, more familiar side. So we've seen a face, a side, a version of the most feared tribe that few people have seen, and I was able to stay with them. And this is why it's awesome, because it's really unique stuff. Even in how they affirm, right? Because when they say yes to something, they say... And every single aspect of these people is incredible, for real. Support these videos a lot with likes, with comments, and following me on Instagram, because that's the support I need to keep doing what I do to keep bringing this kind of content. So now the time has come, I'm off to the river, and the next thing you're going to see is the Hammer Tribe. See you!